Okay, we're uh, here in the upper room uh, on, a, on a Monday night, and we're excited tonight to have our friend Vinny. I'm going to say the first name, Vinny, and then he's going to say his last name. Go ahead. Cola Giovanni. Cola Giovanni. Correct. Uh, he's going to share his testimony. It's going to be a great one. And so, uh, you know, we're excited about that, and um, we'll, uh, we'll be able to hear what God's done in his life. So, Vinny, uh, we waited all week for this, so uh, I'm sure God and you will not disappoint us. So go ahead, my friend. It's all yours. Okay. Uh, well, uh, thank you for uh, having me uh, do this. You know, it's, you know, taking this week and looking back at my life, um, it, it caused me to realize, you know, everything that God has brought me through and uh, times of danger and everything else. Um, you know, I want to start when I was about 10 or 12 years old. I mean, I was Catholic. I didn't know Jesus. I mean, Catholic people can know Jesus, but I wasn't one of them. I, I never allowed the Lord in. So our parents, my brother and I, uh, and my next door neighbor, our parents would drop us at the church for Sunday, Sunday mass. And we would go in one door and then we would go out the other door. We'd head up to Newport Creamery in Garden City. And unfortunately, I opened up my offering envelope and I took my quarter out, out of it. And I was able to buy a coffee and an English muffin for 26 cents at the time, right? Now I'll just say this. I don't rob God anymore and I'm, I'm a faithful tither. Um, I went to junior high school and um, I teamed up with a couple of tough guys who later had their lives went in the wrong direction. I hung around with them and I was friends with them. And my parents decided when I, I was a disciplinary problem in junior high school. And my parents decided to send me to Bishop Hendrickson, which I hated. But looking back, it got me away from these guys. Because one guy got convicted of second degree murder. He shot a guy in a bar. And the other guy, I ran into him about 25 years ago uh, at an ice cream stand at Walk. And I recognized, I looked at his face and I said his name and uh, he recognized me and he's in and out of jail. He's out on probation, this, that, and the other. So, uh, I mean, I, I went through that part of my life and, and God brought me through. Now we started drinking around this time, you know, junior high school, high school, uh, and then smoking marijuana. And uh, I took LSD, I took pills and by the time I was 18 out of high school. My, a friend of mine, his father was a doctor and he stole the methamphetamine, methamphetamine from his, uh, you know, his, his father's uh, office practice and he stole the best, uh, you know, clean needles and syringes. So, I mean, I was really off the deep end just uh, doing this uh, stuff, you know, and uh, of course, I'm not saved uh, as of yet. And, uh, and then he and I, we wound up in San Francisco. We decided to be San Francisco hippies. Another guy went with us. And we started taking meth from off the street. But the stuff was nowhere as good as what, I mean, good, so to speak, as clean as what his father had. And uh, I felt lousy and I was getting holes in my arm. And I came to my senses. I said, I'm not going to do this anymore. And I was just taking pills and uh, everything else. And uh, I'm, we all got hepatitis. My eyes were yellow. My hair was falling out. I called my parents. Uh, they got me a ticket on the plane. I came home. I had to stay in the house for a month or so, uh, you know, to get over the, the hepatitis. And um, then I got a job in the Outlet Tire Center. You guys probably remember the Outlet, the Outlet Company, right? Uh, the yellow tires, and I was a tire changer there. Um, and maybe about when I was 19, I met a, I met a girl uh, through a relationship. She had a baby. I never married her. Um, unfortunately, uh, I mean, uh, uh, she had the, had the baby and she, my daughter is now 51 years old and she's doing great. She's born again. Um, unfortunately, uh, the mother, uh, passed away uh, of cancer in uh, 1979. Uh, um, now what led uh, me to be uh, saved was um, 
I was walking in Roger Williams Park and this guy handed me a track. I was, I was walking right near the bird sanctuary and um, I think I was walking the dog or something, I don't know. And he handed me a track, didn't say a word to me, but it, you know, it was a picture of Jesus on the front, on the cross or something, the blood. I mean, it just, it gripped me. And uh, you know, I read it. I kind of didn't know what it was about, but I remember I put that track in my bedroom on the bureau and I looked at it uh, every time I went by. Um, then I got a job as a landscaper and the guy was a Christian. Um, and, uh, you know, he witnessed to me and I, you know, I really didn't want to hear it to be honest with you. And, uh, he, he invited me to his church, uh, Pentecostal church. And I went there with a friend of mine and we went there and, you know, everybody was raising their hands, speaking in tongues and carrying on shouting. And, uh, I was just, we were, I was just holding in, not laughing, you know? And, uh, I, you know, I, I thought everybody was crazy. Um, <clears throat> but uh, he, you know, he persisted, you know, he was really very kind to me. Um, I mean, I said to him, you know, you, I, in a conversation, I said, you ever listen to classical music? I said, you know, that guy Beethoven, he must have had a pure, clean heart to write all that music. And he would counter what I said with the scripture, all have sinned and fall short of God's uh, high standard, God's, uh, God's glory. And then I'd go off with the lawnmower with that scripture working on me. All this time, this guy's praying for me. Uh, and he allowed me to drink one beer in the afternoon. Um, you know, he could have easily said, no, you're not drinking out while you're working. And, you know, alcohol's not a sin or something. Like that. He allowed me to get one beer. So he stopped at a liquor store and I went in and I got a beer. And, uh, because it was only one beer, I got a king size beer. I come back, I sit in the truck, <laughs> and he starts talking to me. And uh, it was just time uh, to let the Lord in. And uh, so I prayed with him there, right on Pineyak Avenue, in front of uh, um, the Waterman, Waterman School, and my life changed. Um, I wanted to go to church. And uh, now, before, just before I got saved, when I was going to church, I went a few times before this happened when I got saved. I would watch people go to the altar and when they came back to their seats, their faces were glowing, you know? They, they just seemed something was in the atmosphere there, you know? And so I got saved and I went, I went back to this church with him and I, I just loved the worship. And I didn't, I, I would sometimes say, I wish the pastor wouldn't talk so long because I know at the end, he's going to have an altar call. I'm going to go up and we're going to have a good time worshiping the Lord again. So I stayed in uh, that church uh, for a while. Um, then I became a uh, tractor trailer driver. And I, I drove tractor trailer for about 11 years. And so I, you know, I left the church. I was like five years. Uh, you know, I've been in 48 states, drove all around, and then came back and worked uh, locally. Um, now, one thing about when I was driving, I had a lot of time to talk to the Lord. And I would read the Bible in the morning. I had the large print Bible. And I was reading about Moses and how God spoke to him, you know. And I was saying, God, you need, I want you to speak to me, speak to me you know. And so I, and I can be very stubborn and persistent because I spent about two days all day long driving around with my radio off of my truck, just a CB radio on a little bit to hear what's going on and saying, God, speak to me. God speak to me. God speak. So on the second day, as the sun's going down, I look at a shell on a shell gas station. And all of a sudden, God takes over. He just sends his presence into the truck. He says, you're a shell compared to what you could be if you would allow me to fill you. Right? So, you know, I, so that, that was a, a wonderful experience uh, where, where, that I had with the Lord. Uh, in uh, 2003, I, uh, I felt like God was telling me to go to Bible college. And so uh, I, I would, you know, I kind of fought it, you know. Uh, I actually, I've been maybe fighting it for a year before. And uh, I went, finally went to Zion Bible College. 
uh, which I don't regret, which I liked. I learned a lot. I changed a lot. And also, the only thing I regret about is that I took student loans. I, I should have just trusted God, and then I wouldn't have had uh, student loans. Um, and, uh, okay, so uh, along the way here, you know, my daughter, my daughter got saved, and uh, my granddaughter. And um, <clears throat> let me see. I started working at, uh, well, uh, before, I, uh, before I say that, I just want to uh, say a couple of things here. Now, I learned obedience to God the hard way by doing it the wrong, by not doing it and then doing it later. And uh, my uncle gave me a car on Christmas Day in uh, 2010. He gave me uh, my aunt's car. She couldn't drive anymore. Car had 23,000 miles on it. And he just says, here, you know. But he said to me, you know, because I have rear wheel drive on my Mercedes. I want to keep this car, you know, through part of the winter so I can get around and all that. So we go through January, we go through February, we get into March, it stops snowing. I can't call my uncle and say, you know, where's the car? I'll take it, you know. Meanwhile, God's been telling me for about three weeks or so, to sell your car. And, I, and I'm saying, no, that's just not God. That's me. That, that's the devil. Because if I sell my car, I got no way to get to work, right? So finally, I said, God, is this you saying sell my car? He said, yes. Come to me no more with this question. So my friend put my car on Craigslist. And the first person came, bought the car. Uh, so now I don't have a way to go get my check at work. So this guy drives me up to Providence, right? to get my check and he goes in the convenience store guess who calls me on the phone my uncle says come get the car so two layers two, two hours after my car went out of the driveway my uncle called me and said come get the car and, and i hadn't talked to him at all or anything through those months and the thing was god showed me i could have had the car a lot sooner if i had done it his way now, I, I went into a uh, nursing home with the uh, youth pastor years ago, probably about 20 years ago. And we went in, he said, I want to go pray for this woman who has brain cancer, right? So we went in and prayed for her, right? And while we're in there, I look into this room and I see this guy, you know, skinny, uh, you know, white as a sheet. And I, and I said to the pastor, look, and he said, yeah, it's probably cancer, right? So I go home and uh, God's telling me to go back and pray for that guy, right? Not right now, not this nice, but go back and pray for that guy. And I'm over there like, how am I gonna do that? I don't even know him, I'm not family. So I go back a few days later and I go to the nurse's station. I said, I'd like to visit that guy in that room there. And I said his name on the door, you know? She says, are you family? I said, no. She says, you're a friend of his? She says, uh, I said, no. So she goes into his room and she yells, hey, you want to visit her? And he goes, yeah. So I go in and he was a, a veteran uh, from, uh, the D he was at the D-Day invasion. He was there. He had all the clippings of it and, and everything. So I, I asked him if he believed in Jesus. He said, yeah, he was Catholic. I said, you know, Jesus can do anything, you know? And this guy looked at looked at the IV and all the things that were going into him and said, when this thing is empty, I'm going home. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, man, this guy, he's, he's clueless. You know, he's, uh, so I said, I'll pray for him. Uh, so I, you know, I prayed for him. Just a quick prayer. We cursed this sickness, cast it out. So then I leave. I forget all about it. Maybe a month, two later, God says, go back and see that guy. I, I'm saying, what for, you know? So I go back in there. This guy is up and down, walking up and down the hallway with, with a walker. And he says, I dress myself now and, and everything. I said, hey, I said, that's great. So I, I had a little meeting with him and I prayed with him another time. Went, went home, forgot about it. Then the Lord was telling me, go back and visit him again. So I go back and I, and I go to the nurse's station. It's the same nurse. Oh, no, I walk into the place. I look at the door, and his name is not on, 
on the on the door there, on the door doorpost, the door jam. And uh, so I go to the nurse's station. She's going to tell me he's dead, right? So I go to the nurse's station. I said, where's, where's so-and-so? She said, I don't know what you did, but he went home. And I said, I, you know, I didn't do it, but Jesus did it, you know? So it was a, a, a healing, uh, 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 just a, a dramatic healing. And I'd like to talk about another one. Um, a woman got prayed at the altar of the church and she uh, had cancer and the pastor uh, and everybody prayed up there. I did not go to, up to pray for her, but after the service, uh, the board, she was a visitor who was the board member's sister-in-law, the board member's sister-in-law and the board member's mother had died. We're going to a grave site uh, uh, service at a cemetery. Somehow I wound up standing next to her. God said to me, pray for her. You know, I said, well, God, she just got prayed for by the pastor and all the leaders of the church. I don't, I, I don't know what, why you'd have me do this. So I said, man, I said, I know you just got prayed for. I said, I was wondering if I could just pray for you for a second here. I said, we just curse this cancer in the name of Jesus. She goes home, goes to the doctor. They can't find it. She sends an email to the church saying, I don't know who that man was who prayed for me in the, in the cemetery there at the Great Side Service. I don't know who he is, but when he prayed for me, I felt like something left my body. Glory. Ooh, glory to God. Hallelujah. And I got one more story like that. <laughs> my father liked to go to the Catholic Church, and uh, he liked to go to St. Francis Church downtown there. And so we're there, and uh, in front of us uh, is a couple with a child about four years old, and the child has, uh, you know, her hair's very thin. She has that look on her face like chemotherapy, you know. And I said, well, it must be cancer, you know. So then Jesus said, I want you to pray for her. I said, well, I can't do it now, right? I'm in the middle of the Mass, you know. So after the Mass, I tell my father, just sit here and don't move. I'm going to go out. i got to go do something. So I go out and I, I catch the guy and his wife and, and the kid. And I said, uh, is that, she got cancer, the child? Excuse me, does, does the child have cancer? And he said, yes. I said, I want to pray for her. They said, oh, thank you. And he started walking away. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I mean, right now, you know. So I just, I just touched the kid on the side of the arm and said, we curse this cancer in the name of Jesus. Two or three weeks later, we go back to that church. I forgot all about it. The guy walks up to me with this astonished look on his face, right? I, and I, I, I didn't say hi to him. I said, what happened? I, he walked up to me like a robot, you know? He said, the kid's healed. My, daughter, uh, my granddaughter's healed. I said, you know, Jesus did that. So, I mean, I've learned obedience. I, I, I found out if I, uh, uh, what I'm trying to say is, I've learned uh, to obey God because I never know what's going to come out of it, you know? You know, so those, those were... Uh, uh, Three uh, wonderful healings there. Um, now, I just want to talk a little bit about, I, I went to, uh, well, I, already, I already said that, I went, I went to Bible college, right? All right, so I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna bring it up to the last five years. I got a job at Shaw Supermarket as a cashier and uh, I went in there and I, I minded my own business, you know, and just worshiped God while I was working and, and, and just enjoyed it. I said, I'm going to get along with everybody. I'm not going to argue with anybody. I'm not going to take a stand about anything. And look, for five years, I never argued with anybody, had trouble with a customer. I was just, I was just agree with them. You know, I said, we're going to make this right for you. you know? and so, I mean, I'm saying all this to say, I mean, that these people complimented me, which could, they, you know, they, they saw something different in me. And I, I just love to hear that uh, from, you know, from people who really don't know the Lord. Uh, and, and they, because I, I went to work and I, I come into work and I go to the time clock and the girl says, you come in here happy every day. What gives? I said, I'm a Christian. I've invited Jesus into my life. You know, he, he lives with me. And, uh, you know, she said, oh, so 
I mean, working there over those years, two of the girls, two of the supervisors said, you know, we were just talking about you. And I said, something good, I hope. And they said, they said to me, we, we think you don't have a bad bone in your body. I said, no, oh, wait a minute, I, I, I'm a sinner. You know, and I, I do things wrong. And they said, well, well, what we see of you around here, uh, well, we don't see it. And we, and, and I just loved it that God has done this much in me uh, that people can see something different about me. Uh, they said, you know, when people start gossiping, you don't listen, you walk away, you know, and, you know, uh, and that's, that's just, uh, you know, you know, maturing somewhat in Jesus and having a wisdom, you know, and, you know, working there, I, did, I didn't want to hit anybody over the head with the gospel, but they knew I was a Christian because I, I mentioned it. <clears throat> so one, one day, this, the, the cashier, she's, the supervisor says, how are you doing? She says, oh, my back hurts. I said, can I pray for your back? You know, I, said, I told you that I'm Christian. She says, oh, yeah, sure. Go away. You know, next time I saw her, because I don't work every day, next time I saw her, she said, when I woke up the next day, it was gone. Now, there was a girl there who had lumps in her breast. And uh, they, you know, she says, I got to go to the doctors. I'm concerned about it. She says, I've been pushing it off. I'm not, I don't want to have the test. And she says, I know you're a Christian. Would you pray for me? Right? She says, we, we, we cursed this lump. It was the size of a marble. She said, and we, and, and we cast it out in Jesus' name. She goes to this medical center. And they give her the ultrasound. They can't find it. They give her another ultrasound. They can't find it. They give her the CAT scan. They can't find it. She had two CAT scans. She was there for four hours. And uh, next time I saw her, she said, I cried all the way home. The thing has vanished. And that's, that's, that's Jesus, you know. Hallelujah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I mean, Looking back, you know, it's, it's, uh, uh, you know, God protected me. Uh, uh, oh, and there's one story I left out. I'm sorry. I mean, this is before I'm saved. Let me just say this story here. Um, I took LSD and I, for the girl, and she took it. And we went down the cliff walk of Newport, the cliff walk at Newport at the beach there. And we're just hallucinating and having a good time and everything. And uh, um, uh, I get near the edge of the cliff and I'm looking down, you know, and it's all colors and shapes and forms. And it's really just the ocean down there with a bunch of rocks, right? And I don't know if you remember back in the days, uh, hippies, you know, everything was either groovy or, you know, that's where it's at. If something was good, that's where it's at, you know? And, uh, and then I heard a voice that said to me, jump, jump, it's where it's at. Immediately fear went through my body because I knew this wasn't right. So I started to move away, back away from this cliff. But I felt a supernatural force. I, that's all I can say, a demonic force trying to pull me over the edge of this cliff. This is before I was saved. And uh, so what I did was I just turned, fell on the ground and crawled away. I crawled away from the edge of that cliff like I was swimming on the ground, you know, just pulling at the weeds and grass and everything. And of course the girl that's with me, she doesn't know what I'm going through. Uh, she's laughing her head off, right? <laughs> so then I, you know, I get away from the, uh, the cliff off, you know, on LSD, your mood changes, you forget things. And we got up and we just went on. I can't even remember what happened. But that's another time the devil tried to kill me. And uh, when I was a little kid, I was walking down the train tracks uh, when, when I was about 12, uh, from after detention in junior high school. And uh, I wasn't paying attention. I'm walking home. I'm not listening for a train or anything. Off in the distance, I hear the horn toot, you know, you know. The horn toots a couple of times. I turn back and look, and here comes the train, right? Now, I got off the track some time, uh, but I will tell you, it was close. And at that, when I was thinking about this one, 
I'm asking God, what should I talk about? And the stories are coming up. Uh, and I'm thinking about this. I said, what would have happened if that engineer had been reading the newspaper, right? Uh, you know, so God is protecting me. He let me live, uh, you know, for a time such as this. And, uh, you know, today, you know, we're, we're isolated from people, you know, to a certain degree. And uh, the world has shifted. Uh, uh, things are changing. God, you know, the end times is uh, here and everything. But, you know, through everything I've been through, I have to remember, you know, uh, God has brought me through everything. God's been good. You know, every failure I've had, uh, every time I come back to him, he's waiting with open arms. Mm. And, and, and I've, I've learned lessons and I'm, I'm still learning them. Uh, and with that, brother, I'm done. <laughs> well, I'll just say this, you know, I'm not going to uh, do the commentary here. We're going to open it up, but I, I will say, under the category of wonderful testimonies, Vinny, yours is right up there, brother. That was awesome. Okay. Um, Good. Yeah, no, it was really sweet. Very, very, very touching. And so uh, let's just uh, let's just open it up to whomever would like to, you know, process what Vinny had to share and and, and comment back to him. And uh, so go ahead, whoever would like to to share. Well, it seems like to me. Vinny, you've had a life of divine appointments, <laughs> loads of divine appointments. I mean, you had the appointment with the, uh, the man in Roger Williams Park that gave you the track. Then you had a divine appointment with the landscaper, which brought you into the kingdom. Amen. And then after you were saved, you had many divine appointments with people to, to uh, touch them with prayer and heal them. Yes. And, and it is about obedience. And I wish I could say I was as, as obedient as you are. I, I pray that I'd be that obedient. And uh, I thank you for your testimony. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. you. You went from the king of beers to the king of kings, bro. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Who else? Yeah. Come on, guys. Let's go ahead, Ronnie. I will. I, will. I just in, thoroughly enjoyed that, Vinny. I was, I was hanging on every word. The, the mm -hmm. presence of God in your life is just undeniable. It's just a great witness to him when you tell your story and people are either going to believe your miracles or they're not but i know they're real you know because yeah. i've seen them and 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 i think that your testimony will be powerful to unbelievers very good very good thank, yeah. thank yeah. you for giving it yeah you're welcome yeah can i ask you a question Vinny? yes sir um who was the landscaper from cranston that witnessed to you chuck johnson Chucky Johnson gave his testimony at our chapter. I know him very well. Wow. He witnesses to everybody he comes in contact with. Yeah. He's oh, a great yeah. man of God. <laughs> yeah, God. Well, so what that. year did you graduate from Bishop Hendrickson? Uh, what year? Yeah. Uh, 1965. So I was there with you at Hendrickson at the same time. Oh, really? Yeah, I graduated in 66. I was right behind you. Wait, did you... Where, did you take Matt's? Did you take the bus in also? Uh, I hitchhiked. <laughs> <laughs> well, we carpooled and I hitchhiked. And I must say this if it wasn't for the brothers who beat the daylights out of me because I came from a broken home, if it wasn't for those brothers that smacked me around, I would have been in serious trouble. I needed yep. that discipline and they gave it to me. And I've got the prints <laughs> on my face to prove it. Yeah, I'll agree. I, I got hit a few times. And, I, and I, that changed a lot of things for me also, you know? Uh, yeah, there's nothing yeah. wrong with discipline. We should be disciplining right. our kids a lot more today than we did. Mm -hmm. In those days, they looked, if you looked cross, I mean, you got a smack and it did me good. Let me tell you, I thank God for those brothers. Yeah, yeah. And I appreciate and, your testimony, Vinny. And uh, when God keeps talking to you, you keep praying for yeah. people, okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Vinny. This is yes. Tony Fiorello. Hey, Tony. Hi. I enjoyed your testimony. It was great. And I do agree with Norman and Ron and Larry. Uh, you know, I just, 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 I just marvel at how God works in people's lives. 
and how he worked in your life. Now, how old were you when you got saved? Uh, 22, uh, 25, 25. 25, okay, so you weren't a kid. Now, no. did you graduate from Zion Bible College? Yes, I did in 2007, yes. Oh, I, great. Went, I went for four years, I kept up with my class um, and went to summer school and got it, uh, but I graduated on time, you know? Because I, I'm, I was, I was at, I'm at the age where I can't take a year off now. <laughs> because you, you don't know. You, yeah. you know, I didn't want to fall back. Yeah, it was it was hard work. I did it. I, um, I you know, it forced me to study the word and, and read yeah, right. and uh, pray. You know, in fact, I got you know even there. Uh, I had a, a miss up. You, know, we had to read the entire Bible. We had to turn in these cards that to the teacher saying, hey, we read this, my, we, we did the reading assignment. So I, I lied and I said I did it. And I hadn't, I hadn't finished reading it, but I signed the card and I turned it in. I said, I'll finish it tonight. And God said, you go back and tell him you didn't finish that reading, you know? And mm -hmm. uh, so I went back and told him and the teacher said, well, you know, this happens from time to time, you know, and just don't, you know, don't let it happen again, you know? Uh, yeah. but, uh, God was all over me and you know in that school yeah <laughs> the sincerity there yeah yeah but yeah. I like uh, I like what I like the illustration you gave about that shell gas station when you saw that sign and then God spoke to you and said mm. you're just a shell yeah and I'm gonna fill you and that's yeah. all of us and that's why we got the Holy Ghost he fills us. Yes. Yeah, he fills us. Yeah. Amen. Uh, Amen. Thank Amen. you so much. I enjoyed it. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> David, what do you got there, brother? I know you got something. Was that me? David yeah, Allen? Go ahead. Yeah. Vinny, I, I definitely have something. Um, you know, it, it's amazing to me every time I hear these testimonies that um, I'm convinced that, that the Lord pursues us even when we don't even know uh, about him or of him, whether it be through prayers or, or whatever, what have you, he pursues us, he protects us, and uh, and then he reveals himself to us and we give ourselves to him. It's, you know, when I think about where your life and my life and our lives in general, especially like the way that you were living and the, and the things that I did, it would have been so easy for, for you to follow your friend's footsteps the guy that shot somebody ended up in jail and mm -hmm. all these things, uh, how easy it would have been for our paths to go that route. Mm -hmm. um, I had many, uh, many things that happened while I was an addict that uh, I could have easily gone to jail for a very long time. Um, but, but for the grace of God, yes, um, it, somehow I, I got out of that tunnel mm -hmm. and um, my goodness, you know, I'm convinced also, like, I enlightened myself many times with that LSD stuff, and uh, mm -hmm. I'm convinced that's a portal for the devil. My God, yeah. I had some mm -hmm. extremely, extremely terrifying experiences, um, and boy, I'll tell you, it, I won't be convinced otherwise, but what's beautiful is that once the Lord gets a hold of you uh, and does a 180-degree change in your life, which is... Um, uh, you know, when, when those ladies at Shaw said that they, they see such good in you, that's the yeah. testimony, brother. That's the testimony. It's in that, our walk, in our actions, in, in yeah. the way we con conduct and comport ourselves. And yeah. when somebody sets you apart like that and, yeah. and says, wow, there's something different about you. Yeah, Praise God, holy, oh, dear <laughs> Jesus. You know what I mean? That yeah. is the work that he's done in <laughs> you, and, and it stands out. And 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 that's that's just the testimony right there. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I agree. You know, it's more than, it's better than getting a gift and someone saying, "Here's a uh, here's a uh, tray of lasagna. Here's a here's a free fish." Uh, that that stuff just you know uh, that means God's working in me, and I'm you know this seeing, uh, seeing it's his priceless. Him in me. Yeah, yeah, it's priceless. And that yeah. thing about you know typical addict, uh, you know, you had to get a king. Of, uh, I'll share a quick story. My, my last drink was uh, I was going to prove to myself that I could have just one. So. Mm -hmm. I got a big gulp cup from uh, 7-Eleven. I think it was a 64-ounce cup. And I filled half of it with a half a bottle of vodka and a half a bottle of Galore and the rest with milk. I had a, uh, my last drink was about this big. <laughs> it was one, though. 
Right. Yeah. So I, I convinced myself it was only one. So that's that's the yeah. insanity yeah. And, and the insidiousness of yeah. the things yeah. that we delve into. Sure, sir. Sure. Vinny. Yeah. Yes, sir. Art Warner, if I ever got cancer, I'm coming to you for prayer. <laughs> Praise God. You, yeah, we'll, we'll all pray. We all have that authority. Uh, you, know, you, have, you have a track record that's pretty oh, impressive. Yeah. And I, you know, I can, I don't want to say I can hardly believe it because that shows the lack of faith because uh, it just shows if you obey God, look, look what will happen, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've learned that a little bit in my journey, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. Awesome. Hmm. Roger, you got something there, bro? <laughs> I'm going to keep this real brief um, for once. Um, Lord gave me a few words as Vinny was talking. His redemptive work, Vinny's authenticity, and obedience releases power. Hmm. Mm. Mm hmm. Amen. Nice. Amen. Yep. Amen. Good. Great mm -hmm. testimony, Ben. Mm -hmm. You know, can, can I just, uh, I know I'm done talking, but can I just say another story about how hey, I started? No, you're not done, Benny. You're not oh. done. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, I'm just thinking, um, you know, even after I got saved, I'm going to admit I, mo I smoked marijuana for about two years after. I didn't smoke it and go to church. I didn't go to church all the time. But I, you know, I had trouble understanding, uh, you know, certain things. I had trouble understanding that, you know, two people, a man and a woman should live in the same apartment. Together. I had trouble with that. One day that I woke up from that, you know, I had one day, uh, it just, you know, hit me. And, you know, a lot of things you know, over the years, you know, you, uh, so when my daughter was about five, I, I'm riding in the car, I'm smoking a joint and, uh, you know, we had just taken a ride in the country up in situate Western Cranston there. And uh, I'm talking to her, telling her what we're going to do when, when we get home. And she looked at me and did not say a word. But the look on her face was, you're a complete idiot. And you're my father, you know, and I know, you know, like, I know you're high. And, she, I just, and I just freaked out. And I went home and I flushed everything down the toilet and haven't had a puff since and that was uh, 1974, you know? And I, I can tell this story to people that I used to hang around with back then. And they'll say, you expect me to believe you didn't have a, haven't had a puff of marijuana. I said, God took it out of me. I tell them that story, the face of a child, you know? And, uh, and it was it was just a, a complete deliverance. I haven't had a puff. And uh, I mean, I dreamed I was smoking marijuana once about 20 years ago. And I said, what am I doing smoking marijuana? Because when you're in a dream, it's, it's, it's real. And then I woke up and, and I was in my bed and I, I still sniffed my fingers to see if I, <laughs> if I, if I, if I, I said, oh, Satan, oh, Satan you, you're, you're, you're a royal pain in the neck, you know? Uh, and, you know, I, I, I worked at uh, Salvation Army also uh, at 2009. I was the admissions coordinator for the, the adult uh, drug and alcohol rehab. So when people came in, I met them, I interviewed them, I, I brought them into the uh, to the program, and I they have to empty their pockets and I go through their bag. I found a syringe and a needle, no drugs, but the devil used that for a dream too. But it was just a dream, you know. What I'm saying? And there's no super attraction. I mean, it's just a complete deliverance, you know. Uh, it's just, just a wonderful thing. And then one more thing, I, I stopped drinking in 1998. Um, uh, I, got, I went to my daughter's birthday party. I drank too much. My daughter was saying to me, Dad, you're drinking too much. And uh, I went home and I got sick. And uh, I threw up all night, all the next day. And... Um, my, my alarm's going off here. I don't know if you guys can hear it. I, I don't know how to turn it off on this screen. So I, I, um, all, um, you know, so I'm sick all night long, all the next day. And I said, I'm going to have to call the rescue because I'm, I'm dehydrated and, uh, I'm just getting nauseous. I said to God, if you take this nauseousness out of me, I'll never drink again. Within five minutes, I was up out of bed. 
washing my face, driving my car to stop and shop to get some Gatorade. Uh, and that's the last sip right there, <laughs> you know? And uh, so that, that, that's how I got delivered from booze. 